That's right. Here at Mowers and Blowers, we push them into the garage and they come out driving. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. It's like 7.45 in the morning. Uh, my One of my neighbors was driving his daughter to school. He said that there's some craftsman lawnmower across the street. So I get out of bed, jump into my van, driving across the street. I know the area well. <laughs> it's across the street, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, the thing is, you don't know what it is. A craftsman, it could be something from the 60s. <laughs> and it's a piece of junk, you know? But then again, it could be something that's relatively new. And if it's close enough to my house, why not go and look, right? And I see it right now. I don't even know if it's garbage day. I don't know why. Oh, oh. That's not bad. You see what I'm talking about? Oh, damn it. Another Tecumseh. Holy moly. No cutting. Well, I will admit, I haven't had this model. I don't think. Sort of like this. It almost looks like a Toro SR4, isn't it? Shaped like that. I didn't even know that Tecumseh made a uh, cover that looks like that. Hey, look, it has a bagger too. All right. They're forcing me to take it. I have to take it. Of course I have to take it, right? You guys would take it. Wouldn't you guys take it? Six, six point seven five. Huh. I don't think I've ever had a six point seven five crash. Something, something's very hinky. Look. So you have this uh, deflector chute, right? I'm not sure if that belongs on there. Oh, you've got, look, 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 look. Got a new cover. And are these new wheels? Of my subscribers say they like watching the entire <laughs> transaction you know finding it picking it because it's unique nobody else does it this way and uh, it's a real experience on picking junk you know uh, it's funny because my neighbor whom I uh, who told me about this who was walking his dog and he said did you get it did you get it I'm like why else would I be up this early <laughs> you know He's like, I knew you would want it because it had a bagger and it looked like it was in good shape. You know what I mean? But look at that. A brand new wheel. Although this wheel kind of looks like a Honda because it, even though it, because it has like ball bearings on it, you know? I, I'll show you in a, in a minute. And it has that deflector shoot too for the side discharge. It looks like it's just a push mower, even though it has, well, it can't be because it has, because it has the uh, rear self-propulsion bail handle on the bottom. Uh, front two wheels are a little wobbly. Henry, 
What do you expect? You picked it off the street. Yes, this is true. It's got a washer. Yeah, it's definitely rear self-propelled. You know, I don't recall my ever having a 6.75 horsepower Tecumseh engine. They've always been like 3.5, 4.5, 5.5. Never had a 6.75. Have you guys ever had that? Anyway, I guess this is the time that most people throw away all their shit. You know what I mean? I'll give you a better look at this now. And then I'm going upstairs and I'm trying to go back to bed. 21 inch high tunnel mulcher, rear gear drive, variable speed. It's the rear wheel. Uh, this is the one that is in the bag. I was gonna say the bag does look like it's new. Cold, okay look at that look at this cover never used I guess what happened was you probably bought two wheels right because it only came in a set of two and he just changed one does that make sense to you guys because look uh, and usually do they have the ball bearings in here you know the hub I don't think they usually do but this is solid rubber brand new and I've, I don't think I've ever used one like this before, but this is, this has gotta be like 20 bucks right there. Look, has the prickly things on it still. Never used, brand new. Has a washer in there, so this is cool. I'll have to do a little research here on whether or not I could resell this. I'm sure I could. Cause I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna get a more like this ever again, you know? Let's see if the bag is this. Oh, look. Let me get my tripod. Cut. So I just put you on my tripod so I can show you my seeing if this is the bagger for this. I'm sure it is. Oh. Huh. It's got the mulch cover in the back. That's very useful too, the mulch cover. But it's not, it doesn't come off easily unless there's a latch or something, which I haven't figured out yet. And it does fit, sort of, well, maybe it doesn't, it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit if you have the mulch cover on. Let me try to get this mulch cover on. So I just couldn't for the life of me get this out, see? Here's the mulch plug, right? It's like it's stuck in there and won't move. Oh, there we go. It's just filled with crap. Uh-huh. Oh, look how, look, how, look how long that uh, mulch plug is. That's what she said. Oh. Wow, this thing is packed, packed full of crap. So if you had the mulch cover in here, the mulch plug, these things don't allow the bagger to go on. See? Which is usually not the case because I, I put the baggers on with plugs in them and mode and. So, hey, why isn't there any? Okay, so this is the bag for this machine. I'll give you a better look at it now. Now with the bagger in it. Now look how good this condition is. Bagger's in excellent condition. Like he never used it. Hardly. Look at that, huh? I hate that it's to come say carburetor I hate it but this uh, actually has a good primer bulb which is unusual Let's see if there's any gassage in here I doubt it oh there is see it's 
smells okay too. Now why would somebody throw this out if, you know, what would be wrong with it? It has the uh, one lever to uh, adjust the height of the, both the rear left and right as well as the front left and right. So that's a good model. Easy start performance it says. Front wheels are wobbly, but th that's normal for these wheels on the Craftsman. Here's your side discharge where you could put the, uh, ooh, if you look at the blades, they look okay too. This is the other wheel, and I'm sure they're geared. What do you guys think? Should we just, for shits and giggles, try to start it? All right, I'm gonna give it a few pulls. I, I was primering it, you saw. This is smooth too, so this is obviously garaged. Here we go. Oh. Hard to pull. Really hard. I think it's because it's all that all that crap under it. So you tilt it on the side of the dipstick so you don't make a mess. something that's preventing this from turning and it's not that I thought it was because of uh, all the crap under there is preventing it from turning but there's something else that's preventing it from turning at least not easily yeah uh, Something in the engine here is not is, is preventing it from turning well. Well, uh, for the time being, I'm not going to do anything else to this because uh, <laughs> I'm just not. Uh, stay tuned of what I do with this. So I went inside, brushed my teeth, took a shit. <laughs> While I was on the bowl, I thought to myself, well. Why is it hard to pull it? It could be either the brake mechanism is still touching the flywheel so that when you put the bail handle down, the brake is not off the flywheel. But that's rare, you know? It's hard. Then if I release the bail handle, would it be harder? And it is, which means the brake mechanism is actually working. So then I thought, well, this is self-propelled, right? So if it's self-propelled, there's a belt on a pulley, on a crankshaft. Sometimes the belt comes off the pulley and is stuck in between the engine block and the pulley, right? So that could be it. So I'm just going to remove the blade, remove the belt cover, and see if the belt is on the pulley. This is the condition of the bolt on the blade. There's some stuff on it. A lot of grass build up. I believe it's a 5 8 And that's stripped or something or just not holding. I think I should disconnect the spark plug boot just so it doesn't inadvertently start from cranking. And it seems too big. It's a 9 16 Decent blade. Just got a lot of crap on there. Got a grass scraper here. And this cover 
is attached to two of the three engine mounting bolts. I should try to remove that. Oh wow, it comes off. It's very rare. And there's something stuck in there. I think the belt is on there though. But I gotta get a better look. This doesn't look original. Like this bolt here is much smaller than this bolt. It's usually 9 16ths also. Maybe not, maybe it's a half. This is a 3 8 At least that came off pretty well. I'm gonna try a half to see if that fits. And it does. Okay, we got one half inch bolt out, one three eighths. And the cover is now loose. It looks like that's very strange how it this actually comes off. And the belt is on the pulley. It is like really on there like it won't move kind of way. There we go. See? Belt is freely moving on the thing. Let's see if it's uh, easier to crank now. And look, when you move the belt, wheels move. At least that one does. Easier to pull. No, nope, still hard. Still pretty hard to pull. It's very strange. Never seen that before. Remove the cover. Gotta remove the cover to see. Gotta remove the dipstick to get the cover off. Ooh, look at that. Dude, this oil is like, this oil is like syrup. Holy cow. Look at that. Terrible. I think maybe, I think maybe that's it. <laughs> I think maybe the oil is just like goop goop goop. It's so thick. That's not allowing the engine to move. Hey, I think that's it. I think I should drain the oil. Drain the oil, put gas in the combustion chamber, let it soak, then drain it again, and then put fresh oil in it. I think that's it. I can barely pull this dipstick out. There's a lot of resistance. The oil is way too thick. That's what it is. I've never seen that before. Ever. won't even drip <laughs> and when it drips it's like syrup I bet you it didn't even come out look at that it won't even come out it's like it's like, it's like paste. 
I've never seen that before. That's crazy talk. So we'll loosen that stuff up, clean the inside of the engine. I'm gonna pour old gas in there. Got this old gas that I just kept around for cleaning things like gas tanks and stuff. Just gonna pour gas into the engine. So this will loosen up the um, oil, soak it. It should be enough for now. Put the cap back on, Just try to swirl it around a bit by pulling the cord. cover back on while the uh, engine soaks a little bit I'm try to get rid of some of this stuff holy cow of course it doesn't make it easier because it's cold too so this stuff is like frozen you know holy cow look at that disgusting huh Okay, I just put everything back, cleaned up the blade, had tons of stuff on the blade. Had to scrape it off both sides. Uh, you wanted to do that because it could cause your uh, mower to vibrate if the weight is unbalanced. Like it's got more buildup on one side than the other, you know what I mean? So it'll vibrate. I've never really seen it this bad before. I mean, this, it, it's almost like he mowed the grass when it was super wet and then just left it, you know? Didn't take it off or anything. So it's got like really uh, built up gra uh, old grass on here for a long period of time, you know? Look at all the crap that came out of it. I mean like two pounds of it, hard, caked on here, like cement, terrible. You know, um, it's a it looks like a decent mower, even though it's a Tecumseh, you know what I mean? But it's a decent mower, and uh, for him to just neglect it this bad, I mean, you put it in the garage and stuff, but I mean, holy cow. This. It's kind of satisfying to do this, though. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I mean, you guys could just see how bad this is. And I don't think there was any oil in it, so I don't even know if this engine's gonna run because it's pretty bad. It looks like you got some kind of a rope that's twirled around the rear axle here. I'm gonna have to try to cut that out. Just look at that pile of crap. Incredible, huh? So it's been soaking for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Let's see if this is smoother and you can hear like the engine sound. Oh, much smoother now already. And you can hear it, you know, compressing.
much better now. So I'm gonna drain all this gas now. It's gonna be messy. It's gonna be messy. And a lot of it, I think, too. Ugh. Gross. All right, let's see it come out. I might have to do this a couple of times. There we go. Look at that sludge. Sludge coming out. Hope it doesn't overflow. All right, that's good. Gross, huh? Shoot. Dispose of this. I'm gonna bring this to my local Home Depot. They take old oil and old gas. I don't know if they've always done that, but they do it now. I saw a sign. It takes 20 ounces of SAE 30. I'm just putting some of this Lucas oil in here. I wanted to show you some more stuff that I requested from my friends over at HIPAA360.com. They sent me a couple of packages of uh, fuel lines for weed whackers and chainsaws. Um, got a very short cable here. I don't know what it's for. Pretty sure I re requested something a little longer. but this I was supposed to work on the golf cart today, but look, I keep finding stuff on the street. So uh, made me want to work on this today. Got some fuel filters here and a new carburetor. I don't know what it's for. Let me open it up. I'm going to leave a link in the description for all these things that I got in case you guys would like to order it on HIPAA 360 for all your lawnmower part needs. Spark plug, fuel filter, and this is a, I believe it's a, yep, I can see. You can tell by the gasket. Go ahead, tell me what it is. Come on, you guys know what kind of carburetor that is with that gasket, That's right? A Quantum Briggs and Stratton carburetor. You can tell by the recessed nut jet on the bottom bowl. Now tell me if this is primer or auto choke. That's right, it's auto choke because it has this choke lever here with this bracket for the air vane. <laughs> you always need these. So thank you to HIPAA 360 for sending me yet some more supplies for my most commonly used uh, parts. Just pulling it to swirl the new oil around. Get it around the piston rings and all that. Coating it. Now I'm pretty sure the carburetor shouldn't be affected by it because that oil was so thick that there's no way it could even make it into the carburetor. But you never know. So we got fresh oil in here now. We cleaned out the bottom, uh, made sure everything was loose. This is just my theory that it was hard to pull because it was syrup inside the engine, almost paste, you know? So it wasn't well lubricated for me to pull it. So now we've uh, cleansed the entire engine with old gas, drained it out, put new oil in there, Sloshed it around a bit. Give this a prime. 
know what? Let me take the air cover off because that could impede. It's a decent filter. Yeah, decent. I'm gonna prime it. There is gas in here. Although I don't see any coming out. I might have to prime this later, but uh, we'll just we'll just see if it starts up. There is gas in it. Some. But it's not priming. At least that I can see. Maybe the carburetor's plugged up and it won't. Let's just see if it'll start. Okay, I'm going to spray something in there. Hold on. Hold on. Here I go. I've got some spray. Multi-purpose parts degreaser from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. I'm just going to shove it all the way through to the intake manifold. All right, so that's priming it. What do you guys think? Think it'll start? Almost. Oh, it wants to. Keep going, keep going. to running and by the way this real sh rear self propulsion is very powerful I mean it really wants to take off on you you know what I mean and both wheels do spin so that's fantastic isn't it uh, we primed it just like like my last lawnmower that I found on the street we just had to prime it and then it ran on its own and everything which means the carburetor bowl is pretty clean but let's see if whether or not it starts again now without priming it priming is starting to work now because once you start priming it and you see a little bit of smoke you know fuel touching hot parts whatever Also, uh, with these models, right, um, how the primer system works is that um, there's that hose that sticks out of it, that red tube, and basically if you have the air filter on there, it acts like an air isolator too, so that when you do prime, right, the fuel is kind of isolated there so that the vapors will go forward. If you had the air filter off, It'd be difficult to prime because the vapors are coming out into the air. But if you have the air filter on, the vapors have nowhere else to go, but mostly into the intake manifold. You know, following? 
So I think with the air filter on, it should prime better. <laughs> or maybe not. So this carburetor probably needs a little bit of cleaning because the jets are probably gummed up or something uh, that you require a little bit of primer. I just sprayed some into the red tube and throughout the entire carburetor. I'm going to put the air filter back on again now that it has some primer in it. Let it run and see if it circulates that fluid throughout to clean out the gum. no gas in it now it's uh, below the filter it has a little mesh filter in the gas tank when the fuel goes below that filter it means that it's out of gas still has some you know but it's below the filter so it ran out of gas so you know what this is this is actually good because uh, I could store this until next spring you know what I mean so uh, that's cool man really cool uh, I'm gonna put the bolts back on to, to, to get this solid you know, this is a decent mower for a Tecumseh. You guys know I hate Tecumsehs, right? But uh, this one's decent, you know, and it, it looks pretty good. You know, I'd probably get, I don't know, maybe 150 for this next spring, you know, maybe more. Uh, guess I'll clean it up and power wash it, whatever, next spring. But uh, gas is pretty much drained. has some underneath the thing, but as long as it doesn't get into the carburetor, it's great, you know. And even if I have to clean the carburetor or replace it, I've got... Thanks to uh, my friends over at HIPAA360.com, I have a bunch of Tecumseh carburetors I could just swap with this. But, you know, it seems like it runs just fine now, you know what I mean? Um, that's great. Uh, thanks a lot to uh, my neighbor Brian who gave me a tip this morning, early morning, on this uh, piece of machinery. It's decent, really. It's a nice mower. I've got so many now for next spring, which is good because, you know, you sell a lot of mowers in the spring. And clean up this mess and uh thanks a lot for following me today on today's episode we'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers next time on mowers and blowers hey if you guys enjoyed the video remember to give me a like also comment below subscribe remember it doesn't cost anything to subscribe it's free right also hit that little bell that way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them remember to follow my instagram and facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.